Hello, so in this final section we are going to talk about how to create interrupt without timers. So um, I should point out we are creating an entirely new cookbook series for interrupt on the ARM Cortex and with that cookbook series we are going to give a detailed explanation tutorial for interrupt. So what we are going to do here in this course is a very um, a very short summary of interrupt with timers. I don't by any means expect you to um, to understand the intricacies of interrupt from this lesson, but it's just a short course, a short tutorial to show you how to um, create timer interrupt. So before we start, I will just give you an overview of interrupt for people who don't know what interrupt are. So over here we have a picture of a person waiting for the phone to ring, right? interrupt versus polling. So a single microprocessor can serve several devices as we know that and there are two ways to do that. You can use interrupt or you can use polling. In the interrupt method whenever any device needs a service the device notifies the CPU by sending it an interrupt signal. Upon receiving an interrupt signal, the CPU interrupts whatever it is doing and serves the device. The program associated with the interrupt is called the interrupt service routine or the interrupt handler. In polling, the CPU continuously monitors the status of a given device. When the status condition is met, it performs the service. After that, it moves on to monitor the next device until each one is serviced. So, look at this man here waiting for the phone to ring. You can take this man as the CPU. Right, how do we operate in our daily lives? We go about our lives, read a book, watch a movie, or do whatever you're doing. When the phone rings, then you pick up the phone. The ring tone of the phone is the interrupt signal. Right, but in this picture, we have a person sitting and waiting for the phone, a person looking at the phone to ring. This is polling, right? This man is practically polling the phone to ring rather than going about his daily life waiting to hear the ringtone and then pick up the phone, right? So that is the difference between interrupt and polling. And with polling, a lot of CPU um, is wasted because the CPU would always have to check and monitor the status of a given device and if you have many devices the CPU has to monitor each and every one of them and see whether the condition is met or not met whereas yeah the resources that particular CPU resources could be put to better use so this is where interrupt comes in and often we implement polling by using if statement like if A is less than B, then do this. If A is greater than this, if pin B is high, or if this, or if that. Um, we often um, perform polling this way. So um, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go to UVision and write our interrupt program and create two interrupt service routines and let the, um, let the program run automatically whenever the interrupt occurs.